Welcome back. Welcome back to Aurora Stadium, round two of the NAB Cup. And at halftime, it's the Blues leading by 10 points. A very good second quarter by Carlton. Boyle and Franklin, a couple each for the Hawks. Ackland has two for the Blues. And look at that, Sam Mitchell, 18 possessions, the leading possession winner on the ground for the Hawks. And for Carlton, Nick Stevens, its best position winner. And uh, Mark Murphy there with 12 possessions. Let's go down to the Carlton rooms. Michael Voss is with assistant coach for the Blues, Craig Bradley. OK, yes, Chris O, we have Brattles down in the room here. And Brattles, Brattles early, on, early on, you didn't seem to get much flow in your game and you're getting beating in the clearances. What did you change in there to win back that ascendancy? Well, they sort of won it pretty early, didn't they, at the start of the game. So I think our guys just started slow. And we talked about it before the game and it was sort of an object of ours to start well. Hawthorne did, but, you know, the longer the game's gone, you know, obviously our intensity's picked up and, uh, you know, I think our attack on the ball and our pressure around the contest is fantastic at the moment. There was a, a little bit early, there was a few turnovers, um, which is not something you want, of course. But what was Dennis sort of talking about in the box in that particular uh, stage of the game? Well, you can well imagine what, you know, what, what was said, but, uh, you know, obviously you don't want turnovers. You work hard to get the ball. And as I said, the guys are really intense in what they're doing. So to turn it over and see the ball go the other way, it's just, you know, it's just, just kills you. So obviously, we, you know, we're learning. We're a young side. We get better. And uh, we just we've got got to get some goals for our effort, you know. And there's a lot of effort going in, so we just we've got to get some goals for our for our effort, yeah. Now you're able to stem their flow a little bit. They'll take in the forward in the first quarter a little bit too easy. What is your instructions to Scotland? He seems to be sitting behind the ball. What's your instructions to him? Well, Scott, they seem to be trying to get numbers up the ground. So I mean, we can't have everyone up the ground and let them have a two-man forward line. So. Yeah, it's just finding that balance between, uh, you know, keeping on your man and, and also staying defensive, and that's what he's trying to do, so. And just for the second half, what do you got the guys focusing on? Well, look, it's, it's a pretty close game, obviously, and, uh, you know, we just want to try and get some reward for our effort, keep the guys intense, you know, keep them at the contest. The forwards are doing well, the backs are OK, so hopefully, you know, we can get some goals on the board, mate. Yeah, thanks, Brattles, and good luck. Back to you, Chris, though, mate. Thanks, Michael. Yes, Carlton by 10 points at halftime as the NAB Oz kickers go hard at it. Uh, of course, the players of the future. And isn't it great to see the young kids going hard at it? Back shortly for the second half. Welcome back to Aurora Stadium where Hawthorne has some work to do trailing Carlton by 10 points. Now just before half time coach Alistair Clarkson actually gave them their half time address out on the ground. He called them all into a huddle just uh, before they ran down the race and held them there for quite a while to have a chat to them um, in front of the crowd, quite a vocal crowd before he did take them down to the room. So I expect them to come out pretty fired up in this second half to please the crowd. Now if you're a Hawthorne supporter and you're fired up and you want to become a member either get on to the website hawthornefc.com.au or call 1300 Hawks or if you're a Blues supporter and you want to become a member there it's 1300 72 79 81 or the website carltonfc.com.au Thank you Christy, the Blues could be well pleased with their first half, they were jumped early but by half time they were looking the better team and, and their run's been impressive that's one of the things that I wanted to see what they were like against a known running side who link well and they're doing that pretty well they're matching them for sure lance whitnell starting this second half on the interchange bench uh couldn't get into the game in that first half just had the three disposals fisher alongside him and uh Sannington yet to get a touch there's uh, they've got kuda starting and there's josh kennedy i like the look of him bryce gibbs next to eddie betts he's the uh, the youngster who is just all class not super quick with the legs, but super quick with the brain and the hands. So the second half gets underway. The winner into the semi-finals against either the Kangaroos or Fremantle, who play tomorrow. And it's the Blues with first use through Murphy. For Vola, quick hands, Gibbs. Now show us your stuff. Betts tried to give it back to Gibbs. Clark, Hawthorne eventually coming clear. Taylor. 
Now Franklin, and again he breaks, and this time he remembers to have Whoa. a bounce. He might have to have another. He just could not quite get away. Williams, Houlihan with him. Oh, that was a bit crude. Gee, holding the ball, that surprised me, really. He, Houlihan surely made some high contact there. Carlton's ball. Fantastic to have a big man who's prepared to take the uh, midfielders on with some run and dash as Franklin did. Walker across the ground, O'Halpin spills a chance here for Campbell. He's got to get around O'Halpin who did very well to apply pressure. Carlton defence finally able to extract it. Thornton to Walker. Long left foot kick but really to no one. Kennedy lead but the boundary line too close so boundary thrown just forward of the wing for the Hawks. With Whitnell off the field, they've moved Kudafidis uh, into the forward 50, so they've got Favola. And Ackland is playing up in the goal square, which means that Cloak's doing the ruck work. Beaten by Taylor. Crawford, little give. Intended for Taylor, I think, but a bit too fierce. Taylor holds his hands free and eventually gives it to Crawford. Well played. Shoveled back to Young, who chips it inside. Oh, nest of Hawthorne players, a little confusing. Franklin again, here he goes, off to Hodge. Now Young from outside 50, he's a penetrating kick. He's Clinton Young, Lovely it's a super kick. goal. Clinton Young played 14 games last year. Has a raking left foot. He's not just Young Young, he's Long Young. Hawks right back in it. Hodge on the wrong side, uses his hands, put Mitchell under pressure. Stevens for Carrazzo. Bateman comes at him. Clever Carrazzo. Betts back to Carrazzo. Hawthorne tightening up. Houlihan. Not enough on it. Lewis. Oh, Favola. That's 50 metres, isn't it? You'd have thought so, although no damage done. Fev, the wild man from Borneo. Crowd love him. Goes for Clark. Just enough weight. Ackland putting him down. No 50. Umpires have been lenient and no spite in that. Clark to Crawford. Dawson. Blind turning around everybody. There was nobody there. Sewell. Oh, a little tardy. Dawson again. Sewell needs to be good. Turns it over. Murphy. Gibbs starting to get some of it. And Favola has the sit. Couldn't hang on. Free kick. Was there. Favola. Was good, there. Kick. good kick by uh, Bryce Gibbs to the advantage side of Favola. Put the Hawthorne defender under pressure. In the end, he infringed. And you can see there, he was under pressure, Crawford. Of course he is, because you've got a rover up against the full forward. He's had the quick look. He's grabbed onto the arm. Correct decision. So Favola. For just his second of the evening. Drives at home. Again, it's the Blues by seven. Carlton captain Lance Whitnell. The league's ticking over. And there's Scotland, who's matched up against Clark. And I wonder whether Clark's been assigned to him as a negative role to stop him getting in the way. Taylor gets a down shark, though, by Stevens to that man, Scotland. Off a step towards half forward. Coming out, Cooter. Well, that's the move that they made at half-time. Whitnell to the interchange bench and uh, Big Cooter up there in the forward line. Read the kick very well. Big leap on his chest. Kicked poorly a couple of times in the first half. Needs to finish this off. Anthony Cooter he's handed over the captaincy to Lance Whitnell for season 2007 from right on 50. Just off line. Blues by eight points. Guerra, still an evenly balanced contest, this. Travis Tuck. The Hawks uh, made no mistake about recruiting this one, of course, having uh, let Shane go. And um, like his father, he took a while to mature, but has become a fine player. We'll see about young Travis over the coming years. Hand in the back there to Franklin. Tell you what, you'd love to be a forward now, wouldn't you? Umpire Hayden Kennedy awarding that free kick to Lance Franklin for the hand in the back. He turns it over. Two goals to the flamboyant and excitingly brilliant young Hawk. 
Thornton's ball here for the Blues. Got open players on the outer side if they want to go there. Walker and Murphy, two of Carlton's five top ten draft picks in the last five years. Free kick to Murphy. The Blues really with a, a nucleus now. Five top tens, three more from the top 20 in the last couple of years. Here's Houlihan arriving. Crawford comes at him, lays a good tackle. Guerra, well tied up. And correct decision as a ball up. Yeah. Carlton fans wanting more, but Guerra had no chance. Good tackling by Eddie Betts. Now, I just wonder, in that situation, surely body strength plays an issue. The hand in the back, Michael? You, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, just, I just think that... It looked you know, inconsequential. It, it just it? fell forward, and that's what you're going to encourage. Favola. Dawson falling over, but the bounce favoured him. Clever Hodge, good tackle for Vola. Guerra. Hawks ride the pressure from Carlton. Sewell putting it out in front of Little. Has help out there from Gillam if he needs it. Goes long, delivers well. Young again. Too far out this time. Places it. Places it well, and Boyle doesn't let him down. Been impressive, Tim Boyle. Picked a couple of goals in the first quarter. And just with the emphasis going on to Buddy Franklin and Roughhead, he's the third tall who's taken advantage of the fact that the focus hasn't uh, been upon him. And Young's had some important touches early in this third quarter. Fifth season at Hawthorne, played just a handful of games, but he might be starting to make things happen. That's his third goal. So Tim Boyle takes a spell, three goals. And it's been a very good forward. Six marks for the match, five of them inside attacking 50. And the Hawks draw to within a couple of points of Carlton. One by Cloak, taken though by Hodge. Great to see him inside the centre square. Franklin can't control it. What a duel that's been. Wait versus Franklin. Good handball to Walker. Great acceleration from Andrew Walker. Kick wasn't great, but eventually got to Carazzo, who has to prop. High towards half forward. Lewis has got to wait underneath it. Oh, no free kick. Chance for Betts. Fisher hard up against the line and he kicks it out on the foot. Courageous effort by Cameron Cloak to run back with a flight of ball there and uh, cause the spoil. And here we see it there. Eyes on the ball all the way. And Hawthorne have put all their guns in the middle. We've got Mitchell, Hodge, and Crawford in the middle. A fair crew that. Game hanging in the balance. Young again uses that left foot incisively. Crawford had a mixed night. He's been very good for much of it, but uh, just made a couple of mistakes. At the moment, Favola's up on the wing, chasing Sam Mitchell around. He'll contest this ball. Mitchell has to try and prevent him from marking. No hope. Favola much too big, and he enjoyed it. <laughs> He'd get up your nose, I reckon, on the ground at moments like that. Good on him. Gibbs giving it off. Pressure, high tackle. Is it play on? Yes, it is. Russell standing there a little perplexed. Didn't know whether there was a free or not. Oh, wait. Spraying that. Free kick, though. Downfield. No. It is. It's going to yeah. be a Carlton free kick. Umpire win, spotting the late tackle and awarding the free kick to Fisher on the impossible angle. He's, he's had a mixed night, Jared Waite. His best is brilliant and his worst is awful, but uh, there'll be a lot more of the, uh, of the positive as the season goes on, no doubt. Brad Fisher, draft pick in the 70s, but uh, he's been a useful player. That is a very useful kick. That's a brilliant goal. And Fisher's goal, the result of this... <coughs> Waits kick goes out of bounds, but Buddy Franklin catches him around the neck. Jared Waite plays it up, and uh, Carlton get the free kick downfield, get the goal. So from the centre, ball going nowhere. Umpire Wayne will throw the ball up. Michael, you've been out there with players like Crawford and Cooter and Hurd and Buckley. <laughs> Who's the most vocal? Oh, Bucks, um, for sure. Uh, Hurd, he certainly talks out on the field, but Bucks is the guy who likes to set up players. He's probably more of a 
sits up behind the ball and instructs well. But what he's if, probably the most. What if you throw Voss into the mix? Is he still the most? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Bucks is a terrible sledger. Hodge gets it out to Mitchell to Crawford from outside 50. Offline, rough hit, not quite. And a help. Free kick, it'll go back. And it'll be a Hawthorne free. Saddington, who came on early in that uh, quarter. Here's the bit of ruck work just before it, though. By Hodge, if you it, don't mind. Hodge over the top, hits it six metres to the running Mitchell. Terrific bit of setup play. And that's why I love Hodge around the ball. So Roughhead goes back 30 metres and finds Tim Boyle, who will kick for goal number four. Guess what? Carlton have not paid this player the respect that he deserves. Well, last week, uh, Rob, in the game against Melbourne, Tim Boyle had one kick in 96 minutes. But he looked dangerous, Chris. <laughs> well, I tell you what, he looks dangerous tonight. He's taken seven marks and will kick for goal number four. He hangs it out to the right, though. So... Scrapes him in the end for one behind. So the margin back to seven points. Very keen contest this. It still hangs in the balance with about a quarter and a half to go. Carlton in front. Andrew Walker, number two draft pick three years ago. Carazzo, Walker has to come in and help him. And does he? Well done. Brilliantly done. Walker had a terrific night against Hawthorne in a match last year when he had to play on Crowd, who was on fire. Blues uh, work at Ford and there's a free kick to Favola. Jackson it was who bombed it in. Zach Dawson not happy. Let's have a look at it. Does Favola initiate the contact? Yes, yeah. but the arms Five. around the neck. It's got to be paid as a free kick. And that's just carelessness by uh, young Dawson. You can see that. Yeah. And of course he plays it up, but the umpire has no option but to pay it. Pep did well there. He just backed into him, mm. and he kept coming. He brought the free. Stop. He brought the free kick on. Now well, nine pointer. Simpson. Simpson, it is blazing away and missing. And you only get one for that. Can he play by Carlton? Nearly brought it off. The lead is eight. It might have been sixteen. Now we know that's spectacular, which is great. But is it the percentages? You've you've got a shot. 45 metres out from goal, 40 metres out from goal. Gee, You've Mitch, got to take it. Mitchell, unlucky not to get a free kick there. And he's able to retrieve the footy at ground level, shovel it off to Young, who kicks intelligently towards half forward. Renoff can't control it, and the Blues there in number. Well played. Jackson off to Bentick, who drives it low and hard. And the mark taken by Kennedy. Been handy, Kennedy, and he's been playing upfield. He's the tall player in the Carlton forward line who pushes to the wings to give a contest. High towards half forward. Whitnell and Favola in the pack, and there's a free kick to Hawthorne. Yeah, a couple push. of reckless flies by Fev. <laughs> so, Gillen from the back pocket. Dangerous kick. Tuck's got to go here, got to keep his feet. He gathers at ground level. Well done, but Whitnell oh, well done, a great Whitnell. tackle. They let it go. Birchill off to Guira. Kicks out in the path of McGlynn, who's taken high, and will get the free kick. He's Scotland just a touch unlucky there. Just the arm a little bit high. He certainly had the ball in his controls. McGlynn kicks towards the lead up there of Williams. Williams finds it at ground level. Off to Moss. Back to Williams, 55 from goal, kicks it out in front of Boyle again with the run at it. Oh, he hit it hard. Chance at ground level for Little. Carazzo, ball spills free, Boyle again, off to Roughhead, his handball ineffective. They're fight, tr fighting hard to keep it in. Back to Little, who kicks it to the top of the goal square. Loose ball, Stevens comes to meet it. Well done, shovel back to Bateman, who was taken high. No free kick, perhaps ducked a little. McGlynn. Was he pushed? No. Umpire Hayden Kennedy letting it go. Good umpiring and Scotland emerges from a big pack and finds Simpson. On the break. A good left foot. And now it's Whitnell, the skipper. Had the tape taken off the head. That explains the screams coming from the Carlton's room at half time. Here's Favola roving at the front. Clever to Lappin. Little improvised hand pass from Fev and now Kennedy. 
It's just a brilliant left foot kick though by Matthew Lappin, isn't it? We know he's got all the skill in the world, has, has shown us that for over a decade. But uh, this is just a brilliant bit of football. The Favola handball, a little Jubilee's bit different, Bossy, but uh, I guess <laughs> yeah. he hit it with a fist. And then the brilliant kick by the veteran Lappin gets it to uh, Josh Kennedy. Josh J. Kennedy. It was, his, it was Fev's improvisation by when the ball hit the ground, he went after it again. And he needed to because he was outnumbered. And the number four draft pick from a couple of years ago steers it home. It's the Blues by... So the biggest lead of the match to the Blues. Kate Simpson in picture. He got absolutely smashed uh, in that defensive 50 by Boyle coming out. But he picked himself up and helped the Carlton team set up that last goal. Margin out to 14. Every football is nightmare. I mean, he was directly sitting under that ball, and you just got to have courage. You got to stand there and cop whatever's coming. Here it is. And he stood there. He went back. That's exactly what you want to do. That's inspirational. Ball out. Whitnall's diving attempt. Play on the call. Up in a flash from outside 50. Bombs it to the goal square. Kennedy. Well played by Murphy. Inspirational. Had very good possession position there on Kennedy. Inspirational and painful. <laughs> well, I never said it didn't hurt. <laughs> so the Hawks led by 13 points in the opening minutes of the match after they kicked two early goals, but Carlton have worked their way back into it. And then 15 points, the biggest margin of the match. Gillum, deep in defence, probing kick to Tuck. That centre half back, chips it over the top, needs to be precise here. Murphy gathers he's been paid the mark or push so Murphy started on the bench but came on in the early part of the first quarter in defense oh gee he ran a long way Whitnell came in from the side Murphy wasn't expecting it and as a consequence the kick was affected Scotland feeds it back oh helping kick across the ground he's very good and Stevens marks in the back pocket did well Satanta Stevens to Fisher oh. backpedaling it's a free kick for a high tackle. Bateman might well feel disappointed because he really had Fisher where he wanted him, <laughs> but came right over the top. Slam dunk. <laughs> Fisher heads in the Whitnell direction. Betts will have to fly. Easy for the Hawks spoilers. So, a throw in. Sam Mitchell uh, only had three disposals in this quarter, but has been used sparingly. Carazzo being his opponent. Oh, big Lance providing some inspiration for the Blues. The bongo drums are out, getting ready for the World Cup in the West Indies, perhaps. A ball up here on the centre line. Late in the third term, and the Blues lead by 15 points. It's their biggest margin of the night. They'll take a bit of catching from here. Really, since the middle stages of the first quarter, they have been the better team. Last week, the Hawks came from down in the third quarter against uh, Melbourne and finished on very strongly. Murphy to Betts. Out wide for Lappin. Sewell brought him down. Wait. Oh, just got rid of it. Sewell taking it over. Wait very optimistically, pleading for a deliberate out. Doesn't get it. Jared Waite's dad played in Tassie, has a connection here. The late Vin Waite coach Latrobe on the northwest coast for a number of years in the 70s. Chance for Tuck at ground level. Hodge emerges with it, trying to feed it off. Eventually got it to Birchall, but he was under the pump. Hodge again. Carlton applying some wonderful forward pressure. Back to Jackson. Ineffective kick. Gets to Murphy, though, from outside 50. Chips it towards Whitnell. Good fist from Gillum. And at ground level, Clark shovels it to Mitchell. Lewis back to Clark wasn't a great handball Moss Lewis so eventually they work it out of defense high towards half forward Thornton comes to meet it and marks on his chest and here they go again they spread very quickly Carlton Lappin to Stevens 100 kicks the Hawks 130 handballs Stevens Whitnell on the lead Leo went right through the bread basket, couldn't control it. Lappin sitting down, he handballs in the direction of Hallahan, but the boundary line too close. So a boundary throw in 45 metres around from 
the Carlton goal. Tim, you said uh, Vin Wade coached Latrobe, which he did, and uh, not long before he took over, Darrell Baldock took them to about six grand finals in a row. Yes, they won four of them and uh, did play in a fifth, I think it was Rob. He uh, came back to Tassie, of course, with plenty of footy still in him. He'd also uh, learnt to handle himself pretty well, too. There's a few young footballers on the northwest coast found out. Here go the Hawks. Williams, great acceleration after a low collect and a lovely left foot pass to Franklin. Mark Williams, the, the focus hasn't been on Mark Williams because of players like Franklin and Roughhead emerging, but uh, he is one super talented player. And you can just see there the composure. He could have blazed away, but he went on the left foot to set his uh, teammate up. And a breather for that. For Mark Williams, Franklin kicked two in the opening quarter. Hasn't added to it. They need this. And he delivers it with precision. The Hawks are still there. Superstars in the future. So Lance Franklin has three. Just wait, let Franklin get on the offensive side of him. And we know how dangerous he is when he gets in that position. Centre square infringement. Ken Carlton kick a goal in the shadows of three-quarter time. The ball too far out to score. Is he? Yes. He's interested. Of oh, course Tom. he's interested. Just this is a challenge. It. This is what he likes. Well, you need to kick it 75 metres to... He can do that. <laughs> well, he certainly... He's got the wind over his shoulder. Taking plenty of time. Surely not. Brendan Favola from 70 metres, drop punt into the pocket. Lappin almost, the ground level it's Hawthorne. Mitchell tracks across the ground, delivers to Sewell, and the mark's paid. And that'll be it. Three-quarter time at Aurora Stadium, round two of the NAB Cup, and we're poised for a great last quarter. The Blues lead by nine points. Well, remembering that last week Hawthorne finished very strongly in their game against uh, Melbourne in the NAB Cup game at Telstra Dome. And uh, don't count them out because they've got a powerful midfield. I'd expect that Hodge will come into the centre and play in the midfield with Mitchell. And they're the two danger players for the Blues. We're headed for a tremendous finish at Aurora Stadium as Hawthorne and Carlton battle for a spot in the NAB Cup semi-finals. It's the Blues by nine points at the last change. We take our footy seriously here on 10 and we're about to bring out our heaviest artillery like before the game for another season.